Okay, mm -hmm. last week I did the Wednesday walkabout in the front yard. We're actually shooting these on the same day. Today, because there's so much to show you, we're going to do Wednesday walkabout in the backyard. And the things that I want to talk about today are um, a little bit about fertilizing in the backyard and then more steal from Peter to pay Paul and then some other considerations that I am going to be thinking about before I before I leave town one of them being just as in the front yard mosquitoes so I am very meticulously and methodically going around the entire yard and looking for any containers that might be holding reservoirs of water and reservoirs of mosquito eggs so I'm dumping all of those out and trying to be a good hostess to Stuart. Stuart, we might have to have this sprayed back here. This year, we haven't had to have it, it sprayed been so bad, far. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with uh, a couple of my favorite things, my practice of stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Now, I've got this wonderful topiary that I did start from scratch with a cutting. I've had this for several years. I love the way it looks in this long tom pot. And I am, I'm just clipping on it a little bit with my Joyce chin. You could do this with regular scissors, but today, because I'm doing a number of, I'm pruning a number of my topiary, I am pulling out my official topiary Joyce chin uh, little clippers. So I will be clipping this into a perfect ball shape. It already has pretty much that form, but I am going to accentuate it with some judicious pruning and exacting pruning. So I'm, do, I'm doing that. Now, after I finish this, I'm thinking, oh, I would really wish I had two of these. Or actually, I thought of this before I finished this. Um, as I was doing both of my walkabouts, I saw that I had one more long tom pot that was empty. And I saw in the front yard, Stuart will put up a picture right here of the, the long pot in the front yard. Do you remember that we, we saw it? And it had a, a topiary very similar to this one in it. And hopefully the root ball on it will be small enough that I can transplant it from that pot, where it's always looked a little awkward to me, quite frankly. And I can pot it up in this pot, and then, because it's almost exactly the same height, and then I will have two perfect standard boxwood topiaries. This is Green Mound, probably my favorite variety to use for topiary in boxwood. And I'll have two of these then that I can put on either end of the table. And these will be able to stay out in the weather as it starts getting cooler longer than my myrtle topiary. And another thing that I'm going to be doing with my myrtle topiary is I am going to be clipping on them before I leave town and give them one last little prune. And by the way, we start, I started this one from just a clipping and the tips to Myrtle Topiary don't ever, ever, ever what, Stuart? Oh man, should I know this? Yes, you should. <laughs> don't ever, 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 ever let them dry out. And that is my question of the day. Have you ever tried to grow myrtle topiary? And sadly, even though you were so fastidious about it, but it, it somehow dried out, which is why these other things in my garden don't necessarily, other potted plants don't have to be watered every day. This gets watered every day in some cases, even twice a day. So I've got more clipping to do on this, but I'm going to do that before I leave town because there's always kind of a list of things that I do. And here's where I will give my disclaimer, lest you try to take advantage of me. <laughs> there will be many, many people here while I am gone, staying in my house, watering for me. There will be photographers here. Uh, you and Matt are going to be doing some shooting, I think, Stuart. Absolutely. You'll be coming and going. I have a security system. I have a, <laughs> I have a security patrol that comes around in my neighborhood. She's prepared. I'm prepared. But Stuart, well, Stuart it, it, rightly tells me to always. Well, and it, it, tons of people have reached out about it, and so it's know, good to let everybody I know. know. And it's, I appreciate it's, it's, that you guys. I so appreciate that. It's less about and, scaring people away and more about letting people know. That yeah, letting people know, and how much right. I I appreciate that you guys are my guardian angels. 
and you look out for me. So I've got, once you start, you cannot stop. And I've got lots <laughs> of clipping to do on this. So I will continue that. You can see from the, rent, from the table and all of these little needles that we did get some rain because it knocked off the dead needles, which is another reason you need rain is not just for the moisture, oh, wow. but to cleanse the air. The air feels so much cleaner. Our air quality had gotten really poor and the air feels so much cleaner, but then it also kind of gives a, a, a good shaking to the trees. So it, it then uh, washes out any kind of, in some cases, dead foliage, leaves, and needles. Look at that cute, cute little guy right there. Now, another one of my favorite things. If my first thing is to steal from Peter to pay Paul, here is another one of my favorite things. I cannot gush about this enough. So many of you are curious. Um, this is the bucket from my Lomi composter and Insert a countertop <laughs> composter that that it true uh, true confession they sent me one to try they are not inexpensive my gosh they are worth every penny put this on your Christmas list now I have you I have run it nonstop since I got it it is so much fun my new protocol at night Stuart in the evening is that I do the dishes, I start my dishwasher, I make my coffee for the next day, and then I turn on my Lomi composter. Because overnight, it will turn any of my vegetable debris, my clippings, leftovers. No, I did not. <laughs> and it smells wonderful. No, Are no, you, you didn't, but that's what it looks challenging like. my crazy. veracity? Not at all. It's just amazing how close to that. Oh, it is like. just it is yeah. just wonderful. It's, it's, and then I wake up in the crazy. morning, it makes me want to get out of bed for the coffee that I've already <laughs> made and for the compost that I that has been created overnight. It is just like it is like magic, I kid you not. You can well, tell you could, I yeah. I love it. I love my Lomi. So what I am doing after I'm clipping these boxwood topiary is I am giving them some of this wonderful, wonderful compost. So then in, in one night, I've created just the right amount that I needed to create for, well, I think I'll wait and top dress my other when I reap transplant that I'll top dress my other one and the rest of this mulch but it's wonderful because then I can just empty it and show some love to the topiary that are on my back stoop or I can make a large batch of it but I, I just I cannot tell you how gratifying this is and it gets like almost perfect scores on on Amazon or the reviews and I can see why it's it is very addictive if you are a gardener you want i promise you you want this and this is not a commercial this is a, this is just a testimonial from how much i love my lomi well it's, it's the kind of thing everybody should kind of have because it's i mean i guess well the other thing is that i love all making great compost and using even even if you didn't have a garden you could give it to someone who did yeah but i don't have to walk all the way outside and dump it out i, I yeah. have a natural place now where i can immediately put that stuff and and it it is also taking bulk out of my composter which you guys have seen many times my composter is just absolutely overflowing okay can i just say how beautiful my baskets are looking i guess you guess <laughs> The other day, Hubs and I sat from our mom and dad chairs and we looked out here and this was covered with both butterflies and a hummingbird who there must be a hummingbird nesting near here because at a certain point in the evening, we have noticed that hummingbird comes back to this, to these compositions every time. Now, the only thing I'm going to do is probably cut into the sides of them a little bit and insert more of the coleus. I just took some more clippings and I'll do that before I leave so that these will really be full and beautiful. They're in this part shade location very uh, strategically and it is so that the clippings that I put in here and some of them I'm not even rooting I'm just sticking them in there directly so that they they 
won't be so sun beaten down that they will be able to get established and put out new roots and get established without doing it in full sun. The other thing is, is it's slowly slowing down the opening of these lavender mums, which I think are beautiful. So I won't have to replace them as, as frequently because I can just take them out and put them back in. That is a case of plant or plop. Those are kind of just gently plopped in there so I can replace them with another four inch mum if I so choose. But then the other thing that I started doing yesterday is I thought, oh, I can embellish them even more, though I did stop because I'm not going to be here. But I can take some of my still green Nandina berries and I can tuck them in here to cascade over the side doing two things. They, they then won't be eaten by, by birds if you're worried about cedar wax wings and other birds gorging on them because they're, they're really not ripe yet and I don't believe they gorge until they're ripe. <clears throat> but also they, they won't turn red because I don't want them to turn red because that would not match my color palette and my beautiful color echoes that I have created through my landscape. And why I decided on this palette because there's other things blooming, not a lot, but there's other things blooming that are in that more pink, lilac, pink range. So I think these, these look really lovely. They will continue to become more profuse and I think they're great. And then when I come back from my trip, since I'm doing much more modest autumnalizing and pumpkinizing this year, I won't have to put out as many, but this will be a wonderful focal point for when you come in, when you come in the gate. So, so that was my garden design thing. Okay, Stuart, I wanna come over here. I think I already showed you this, but I've relocated them a little bit and I have to show them again if we've got some new followers. And by the way, a huge, huge, huge thank you to those of you, when people comment and they ask a question that, you, that might require kind of a lengthy response from me and you already know the answer because you've been watching me for a long time, but a new viewer doesn't, I so appreciate you answering them on my behalf and explaining for me, for example, that who is Stuart? Stuart is my photographer, he's not Hubs. Hubs is Hubs, uh, you know, and you guys answer those questions on my behalf and I cannot tell you how helpful that is, it makes me, feel so much that we have a shared community here because you guys have my back and I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So if you are new to this channel and unlike the rest of you who are old to this channel or <laughs> maybe not old, but who have, been, who have been following me for a while, you will be able to test, serve as, as give a testimonial to how wonderful my Blue Point Junipers are doing in my faux bois pots. And in last week's walkabout, I showed where I, I, I had identified in the front yard some more of them. And this is as happy as they have been. So I, I am just, I'm thrilled with that and I can't help but be braggadocious on it. And I'm not ready for the reveal yet, but I have some fun new natural top dresser mulch that I will be using once I, I do that as part of my, my indoor winter hygge for when I start winterizing for, um, for the coming winter and the holidays. Okay, let's go this way, Stuart. Got lots of needles to clean up. I am still in the process of kind of pinching this back, but I am pinching back um, all of, of my begonias really very hard so that these will flush out and there won't be any of this damaged foliage on the leaves and by the way as an extension of of my love for loamy <laughs> uh, hashtag I love my loamy um, I keep a loamy bucket so if I've got an in, indoors I can just put the my scraps and stuff directly into the loamy bucket but out here I keep a, another bucket for things like this that I just throw in here and then I can add this if I don't have enough food scraps to do 
to turn it on at night, you fill it up to, I believe it's about 75% of the bucket. If I don't have a, a full bucket for Lomi, then I can add some of my outdoor scraps. So I keep a bucket here for just that purpose, those purposes. And by the way, here are more of, you've seen these before, but look how beautiful these are flushing out. These are all taken from cuttings that I just pinched off, broke off. There's another pot I just started there. So, um, so there's, there is all of that. So let's go this way. Now, okay, I have shown this about a million times, but I'm gonna show it again as a nice segue from my little blue point junipers that I dug up and made a little evergreen forest out of to a big guy that grew up a long time ago. Uh -oh, I think I know the daddy blue point juniper that was planted by birds forever ago. And this started out the way those other ones did, those volunteers did, very tiny. So this guy has grown up. It's great in this location. It's tough. It's an alternative to arborvitas. This is a blue point juniper, but there are other uh, blue junipers, uh, I can't remember the one that's more, I'll think of it, but there's a number of other kind of blue junipers. If you know it, please answer in the comment below. I've got menopause brain, um, but, but, but these are beautiful and they're tough, tough, tough. So if you have a full sun location where historically you might have grown an emerald green arborvita or less, uh, less heat drought tolerant uh, arborvita, then you might want to consider a juniper. So looking at that there, here is something that I'm keeping an eye out for. And that is, I've identified them in the front yard, but now I'm going to start identifying them in the backyard. And if I had an orange flag, I would put it right there because I'm going to let that grow a little bit more in place. And then I'm going to do one of two things with it. It has a perfect baby straight stem, so I can make start a baby topiary out of it. It's a perfect candidate for that. I could dig it up and I would dig it up after a rain when I would less brutalize the root ball. But the other thing I'm thinking is, what if I decided to leave it there and just create the topiary form out of it in situ and create another one of those, let it grow up, or just have a boxwood ball or a, a juniper ball, or let it get up to be about this height and be an intermediary height between that boxwood and this boxwood, just by leaving it in place and training it as it should grow, which is how all of these red buds came into being. They all just went to seed. I identified where I wanted to keep them and then I gave them some extra TLC. So what I would do is if I decided to leave it there and let it grow and become a topiary, then I would just nurture it, give it some of my, my loamy compost maybe and, and really baby it. So this time of year, as you're doing your own walkabouts, make sure that you identify um, those candidates that have great potential. Another reason I love a small garden because it's probably amazing to you how I have sh shown this garden how many times on these Wendy walks, Wednesday mm, walkabouts and there's always something new and there's always something to keep me busy and active and there's enough diversity that it kind of really keeps me keeps me going and active. So this area here is looking pretty good, isn't it, Stuart? Mm -hmm. So when, when careful backing up, when, when I get back, temperatures hopefully will have cooled. We're still in the 90s right now, and we will be doing lots of outdoor dining, I anticipate, once, um, once I get back. Okay, I'm also identifying more of these cherry laurels because I think these are these really do well inside and out if you give them enough sun when you bring them inside. And this one, I need to pinch it again. It needs to fill out some, but you can see all of the pretty new growth. Can you see that, Stuart? Yeah, I'm getting blocking the light so we can okay, see I'm it. sorry. No, it's me, I'm blocking it. Okay, so you can see the lighter green, which is the new growth, but I'm gonna pinch that off to encourage bushiness and then you'll see some green coming out. So it will start to fill out. But I love these 
This is free gardening. Gardening doesn't have to cost a lot if you are just creative and resourceful and a little bit energetic. So, another thing you want to be doing this time of year, and that is looking, ooh, look at, look at the butterfly, Stuart. Yeah. I don't know if you caught it or not. Yeah, he may come back. Um, is, is when you go to your garden centers, uh, it's amazing, let me digress for a moment. It's amazing how much more uh, insect wildlife there is now that it has cooled down. By the way, this Veronica is a pollinator magnet. It's one of the reasons I don't cut back all of it, just some of it because it loves, the pollinators love these seed heads. Um, but is in your garden centers now, because the nurseries, you know, they've, they've had the same problems you as gardeners have, and that's keeping their plants and their inventory alive. And a lot of times things are just barely alive, but, but bad news for them, good news for us, because then we can sometimes get really good deals because, especially at big box centers, because they don't tend to um, water their plants as much and, and really be as attentive to them as they should, which is how I, I struck such a great deal on these sad looking Miss Lemon Abelias, which is what, Stuart? It is our plant of the month oh, yeah, on our website, Miss Lemon Abelia. One of my new favorite plants. I, do, I, I love it so many, so many different ways. So this one, these were on clearance because they hadn't been taken care of. These were on clearance and they were marked down 75% which is a bonus for me. Now, if I had ordered these directly from Southern Living, they would be beautiful, but this inventory hadn't been taken care of. But I really looked at them to see if, since we got a little bit of rain, if, if these were gonna be pushing out new growth before I bought them. And if I could cut them back hard, plant them, and they would flourish. And look here, Stuart. So this is the kind of examination I did when I was at the nursery. Sorry guys, there's a few mosquitoes in the camera shaking. I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay, no see that? Yeah? Yeah. So see, even this stuff that looks like it's dead is putting out new growth. So I know this plant is still viable. So I am going to cut out all of the dead wood, give it a good trim as I am going to do this one and I'm also going to, look here, Stuart, see this one I checked too. So this is what you want to do if you're going to buy a plant on clearance, because even at 75% off, it's not a deal if it's not going to live. Now, that's not to say that every plant I bought on clearance lives, but, yeah. but you want to make sure that you're going to give it its best start. So look for these kind of deals. Um, Right now, like I would be looking for sunshine lagustrum, abelias, um, nandinas, encore azaleas, those kind of plants that they have to get rid of inventory. And, and I think it's just a, a great deal. And pretty soon, it's still a little bit hot here in my zone 7B garden, but fall is the best planting time. So I will be planting these in the fall. And I think I'm gonna tuck them back in here where I, I, anyhow, that's where I'm thinking I'm going to do is tuck them back in there because I've got one right there at the end. I've got a taller version over here and that will kind of complete that rhythm and repetition of them. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will be very, very self-satisfied once I do that. So that's one thing I'm going to try to get these in the ground before I leave. If not, I might get Victor's, Victor's help with that. Um, Here's all of my topiary. They have, they have loved the rain. They've put out a ton of new growth. And because of that, they have started to lose their form. So I will get my clippers, my scissors, and I will really give these another tight prune so they will thicken up um, while I'm on vacation. Now let's look in here, Stuart, because one advantage sometimes because the, when we had the rain, it broke their form. They were like this. And then sometimes it breaks their form and they open up, which is not necessarily a bad thing because then light gets down inside there. And when light gets down inside there, what happens? Uh -huh. 
new growth. And so I, I might even not prune these, just let them stay kind of open so that they can flush out and fill out while I'm on vacation. Then I'll come back and give them a prune. But I definitely will also give these guys a dose of that compost. And what I'll probably do is take some of that loamy compost and I will put it in a mesh bag and make some compost tea out of it. Really let it sit for a while, make some strong compost tea. And then because I don't wanna have to remove the gravel to put the compost down, I'll just water all of these with the compost tea. What do you think about that That's strategy? Um, and you can do that with any kind of compost. Just um, if you're making a large batch, those those uh, burlap basmati tea bag or basmati bags sacks that you get with large quantities of basmati rice those make great large manure tea tea bags if you want to use those and if you're going to make a big batch okay so this is one of the things this tall phlox that's still in bloom that kind of informed the colors that i wanted to use over in those in those baskets that i created so that is this area may not be fabulous not a ton of color uh, this is my early bird this is an early bird southern i believe this was a southern living plant this was before i started working with them and i just bought it though i say it's an early bird but it's bloomed late so it's probably not i can't remember exactly but this is pretty and i love crepe myrtle as a cut flower. I think it's not used enough. It may, it may not be a long lasting cut flower, but then also these berries, you can tell I'm thinking about the season, the, the dried pods that it puts out, these, you spray paint these and they just are wonderful to use in decorations or on packages. So look at all of your things that are starting to set seed right now through kind of through that lens. Um, the, other thing I'm noticing on this walkabout is I've dug up a lot of those garlic chives, but there's some there that are about to uh, flower and I'm going to cut off all of those flowers and cut a great big batch of chives and then I'm going to cut them and bring them in and save them for winter. So I may freeze them, I'm not sure. But by cutting off those flower heads, I will also reduce them going to seed in that area and creating more of a problem. So that's another thing that I'm doing. Okay, uh, kind of tragically, though I guess it's not that big of a tragedy, but I came out last night when I was showing Phoebe how I watered my containers and things. And it was in the late afternoon and I brushed this. I don't really see them now. I saw them last night. And, and whitefly was starting to develop on this. I don't know that I even want to use any insecticidal soap to, to get rid of whitefly. So I'm just going to be blasting them with a shoot of water. Look at how many of these flowers this is setting. So, as I have told you, I have harvested all sorts of eggplant and I will continue to harvest it. And then what I'm going to do is make all sorts of batches of, of, of eggplant parmesan to put in the uh, little dishes. Let me just, yep. I don't, I don't want to give it away, oh. but the little dishes that I just purchased in a thrifting video that you guys are going to see, I don't know when. I think they won't have seen it yet, but we'll see. Okay. I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you they've either seen have it, or maybe you they haven't. haven't, so we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. It depends on when this <laughs> stuff gets posted, but these are just the right size and the right length. I should really have clippers so I don't, there you saw a little bit of the white fly because these will be the perfect length and they're just so, so cute. Aren't they cute, Stuart? It's crazy how okay, white look, they are. Look here, look here. Oh, oh and that doing? reminds me of the thing that, the story that, okay. What am I looking, oh. The story, my squirrel story I'm gonna end on. Because the squirrels have just, oh my gosh, have they been bothersome you this think, year. You think he'll be okay being on YouTube? I don't know, squirrel? 
Do we need you do to we, sign a release? Do we have your permission? Look at the way they just splay themselves. He that is so like, weird to me. He said he's, he's not nervous about us at all. Nope. I, I still am despairing a little bit about my emerald green herbivitas. I am not sure if, like this one, has lost a whole section. This whole section is dying. But I'm going to leave them there. Somebody, one of my, one of you guys commented that you had, you had one you thought was dead completely, and you let it go and it came back. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a chance. And then, since I don't have my harvesting apron on or anything. Look at these sweet little peppers, chili pie peppers. And these weren't doing anything when it was so hot. And now they are going gangbusters, um, as are the shishito peppers and the other ones. And these, I think these are so cute that these would just be decorative as well as, you know, darling and decorative inside as they are on the plant. But I love those, and that's growing in a container. I just want to point out that that's growing in a container. Getting a whole new flush of bloom on this black and blue salvia here. This is, and I can't remember the name of it, I got this at Bustani. Let me see if the tag is down there. I got this at Bustani. When we went there, we need to put up... Um, a link to that video at Bustani Plant Farm in Stillwater, and it still has not bloomed. I'm hoping that maybe it will, because this is supposedly a really tough plant. I can't remember what it is. Oh, this is, yes, I do. It is some kind of false gara, and, but it still hasn't bloomed, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it will. I'll take more cuttings, and the more you prune, the happier this coleus is. The more you do this, the happier it is. So feel free to just go for it. And I'll put more of these around the perimeter of my baskets. Put a little bit more here. I would not do this if it weren't shady and in the cool of the morning when these are still uh, crisp enough to just break off easily like that. But since I got up at five, it's still pretty early, isn't it, Stuart? It is. Uh, more peppers over here. I want to point out this sunshine legustrum here. Now, if you look in the back, those that we pruned the other day, you guys helped me prune them. They're flushing out more golden. They're getting thicker. And those, got, oh, those got, did get a little bit of irrigation during the summer. This guy, as a test... I thought, I am not going to irrigate this legustrum at all and see how it does. See, I'm emptying water. See how it does. And look, it. all I need to do is clip this up. It's going to start flushing out in that sunshiny color. And it made it just fine with absolutely no residual watering, which is pretty amazing. Stuart's back is starting to hurt. <laughs> So I need to I need to wrap <laughs> this up. Um, I'll be harvesting more peppers. These are starting to go gangbusters. This is dragonfly, and see the distinctly kind of subtle different shape. This is more like a regular green pepper. These were really tardy. These were really lethargic, but they're coming out. And yes, the people that water for me can harvest anything they can get out of my very small vegetable garden. Um, there's ugly stuff over here I haven't gotten to yet. Just ignore it. Watch out for that rake at the bottom. It is a gauntlet that Stuart has to walk. I could pull off one of those cartoon moments where they step on a rake and it pops up and hits them in the face. I have yet to get very many tomatoes, but I've got lots of flowers. I cut this one back way hard. And hopefully I will start getting some, some blooms pretty soon. The portulaca in those baskets. I do love my, my baskets and my QVC line. There's my commercial for myself. Those are like three years old now. They've been outside the entire time and they are still going strong. There might still be some left on QVC. Those will not come back next year. So if you can still get them and you want them, 
uh, take advantage of that. And then Stuart, we're gonna, oh, so love this, gonna plant more of that. Um, but I wanna come up with this last closing squirrel story. So see, I'll put more of this coleus in my baskets. And Stuart, next time you, there, a mosquito lights on you, remember mosquitoes are the most underappreciated pollinator there is, because <laughs> they're a pollinator too. See the little moths and stuff? They love the celosia. So I came out this morning. This is the only time I probably felt a little bit bad when it came to squirrels. So this morning I came out and, and by the way, this, this one, I planted one of these hollies right here and I think this holly died as soon as I planted it. I think the box may have just real, it came in that great big cart and I think it, it uh, normally these would come plant by mail. I got them in a way you guys wouldn't get them, but I think it overheated in there and it turned brown almost immediately, so I may need to replace that one. Um, but, okay, see this box right here, Stuart? It was opened. This utility box. Okay, well, it's kind of hard because it's, it's hard to shut completely. Yeah, I can see So it. it's always open a little bit like that. Yeah. So I came out. And see all this stuff right here? Oh, yeah, what am I shooting here? Hold okay. on. Okay, I'll show you. <laughs> I came out this morning, all this stuff that you see here, I left in place to show you, that was all in there. This was filled with this stuff. I thought, I don't know, that it got captured in there when we had the big thunderstorm the other night. So what did I do? I just pulled it out and scared the heebie-jeebies out of me because what was that in reality? A nest for a squirrel? It was a squirrel's nest. But see, look, this is a power box, so that could have been not a fire hazard. So I need to make sure that this gets secured much more tightly. I pulled it out. The squirrel yelled at me and yelled at me, and I did feel kind of bad, yelled at me, splayed itself up on the wall, and then just watched me for a while. And I watched it. It was mono a mono. <laughs> squirrel Linda. Squirrel Linda. So then... I left and I came back in the backyard and I took a picture of it, Stuart, so we could show everybody. I came back in here and this is when I felt bad because that squirrel just waited there until I left. Then it went back in here and was just in here without any of its nest, just hanging out in that box staring at me. And it stayed there for a good 10 minutes in there in that empty box without its nest. Then I felt kind of bad. I felt kind of guilty. And, um, and Jamie asked me if, oh, there, I hope that there weren't any babies in there. Well, I don't think this is their baby making time. Isn't that in the spring? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think so, but I did feel kind of, kind of bad, but it was either me doing that and dislodging it and making him homeless for a while or him potentially flaming on. <laughs> if if there, that was a fire hazard so would you have felt bad Stuart yeah yeah kind of bad. I get it. and then so I'll, I took a picture of it glar glaring at me glowering at me as it looked out of that box so I'm going to go inside with my bounty uh Stuart have I forgotten anything I on this so. long backyard Wednesday walkabout so. um so there you go it was a long one you guys go out and enjoy your Wednesday while I am hopefully when you see this at Raffles sipping a Slingapore sling with my kiddos. See you next time. So last week you saw my Wednesday walkabout in the front yard and I still have on the same clothes as I did because I'm actually shooting both of these on the same day but so I really, I mean, it's not such a much. I've got a hat from Dillard's with sunscreen. I've got some Nike a la from Goodwill. I've got an Old Navy t-shirt. I've got some more, my backyard version of high C boots. Love these boots. Um, and then I've got some of my cool job gloves that I love so much. And let me just tell you that I, the outfit of the day, we really need to show you <laughs> 
is Stuart's outfit today oh, wow, yeah. because the mosquitoes are terrible. So he is clothed head to toe. He's got on a lightweight, very lightweight. Like a windbreaker. Uh, yeah. Windbreaker, Columbia windbreaker on with the hood up, a baseball cap with the hood up. He's all sprayed to the max. And then we discovered another use for these cool job. He can, he can then put these on to protect his hands while he's shooting. And well, another reason we discovered why we love them so much is because they protect your wrists and they kind of, of enclose your wrists. Then mosquitoes can't get down. <laughs> which is where they love to get them. Which is they, they like to get is down into around your wrist area and into, into the gloves. So I wish you could see Stuart now. So I'm, Stuart, we need to I'm do that. I'm a dance crew so is what it looks there like. There you go. Stuart, have I forgotten anything? You forgot one thing. T uh, tip your head down a little, look down at the ground and poke the top of your hat into a bowl like it is when I see it inside. Can you do uh, that? Oh yeah, like that. Oh, like poke that. It down. Now hold it kind of a little more of an angle up. There we go. I wonder if anybody else sees it. I'm going to put up a graphic here if I can find one and we'll see if everybody else agrees. All right, we're good. Agrees with what? With what it looks with like. With what it looks like. I know, but you didn't say what you well, think Well, I know, I'm gonna like. put up a picture, but I guess I could say it, a nacho bowl. It looks yeah, like yeah. A, a nacho Yeah, yeah, where you put the, sal uh, the salsa in the middle and the yeah. chips around the edges, yes. It's perfect. Yeah, he will ask me, are you gonna wear your nacho hat? <laughs> okay, so there you go. Now have I forgotten anything, I don't Stuart? think so. Then that is your outfit of the day. <laughs>